Hi guys, this is Boss Jedi Sohan, and recently I made a video and posted an article on MP1st and other places around the web talking about getting a headset versus getting a pair of headphones for your computer or your game console, etc. And so I talked at length about um, sound cards and stuff, and one of the things that I recommended was what you see on screen, the Zonar DG uh, sound card by Zeus. And something that occurred to me was that I didn't really talk about how to set it up properly to get the most bang for your buck out of it. So I figured I would just quickly run through a few of the key settings that you need to adjust to make sure that this thing works properly. So first things first, we're going to talk about the main setup. Now, if everything you do on your computer is watch YouTube videos and listen to music like if you're not if you're not like watching blu-ray movies on your computer and playing games you want to set your sample rate to 48 uh, kilohertz and the reason for this is that at 96 kilohertz anything that's below that in terms of quality or sample rate is going to be upscaled or upsampled so that it plays back at that sample rate which causes a lot of distortion in the quality of the audio, the sound of the audio. So because I play mostly games and listen to, you know, DTS encoded uh, movies and stuff with HD audio, that's typically at very high bit rate and sample rate. I leave it at 96 hertz now, or kilohertz, I should say. Now, like I said, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, 48 kilohertz is more than fine. It's, you know, CD quality. 96 kilohertz is kind of approaching studio quality. And also because I do a lot of this, you know, talking into microphones and recording it, I need to have the highest possible uh, playback quality that I can get out of the sound card. So that's why I do that. Now, for the audio channels, this one is something that I'm kind of... I'm very confused about because in the thing that they put in the software, it says, you know, it suggests sort of the typical setups, you know, if you're doing just kind of standard listening and watching of stuff, like we talked about with the sample rate, two channels is fine. But if you're watching movies, six channels, something with more surround sound would be eight channels and 3D games would be eight channels. Now, the thing is, I really don't know what kind of effect this has on the output of the sound card. I can tell you that the difference between two channels and eight channels is nominal. Like I haven't noticed a, a quantitative difference in the quality of the audio, but at the same time, I'm sure there's something going on that I'm just not familiar with or understanding that is doing something funky. Like I'm, if I'm missetting it. So in that regard, because I, most of the stuff I listen to, especially when I game now is going to be in two, two channel. And I'll talk about that in a later video. Um, but because most of the stuff I do is only stereo, I only see the need for two channels. But at the same time, you are more than welcome to leave it at eight channels. I, I don't know the difference, <laughs> to be honest. I, I understand the difference between having multiple channels of audio and having more or less, but I don't know what the sound card is doing to output those different channels. So you can leave it at eight. I leave it at two just because, but chances are either's fine. Analog out, this is, I mean, this is all dependent on what your audio device is, but if you're using headphones, make sure you set the impedance correct, or impedance, <laughs> impedance, impedance correctly for your headset. So I have 32 ohm headphones and they, um, they require 32 ohms of power to be driven properly or to reach full volume. So as such, either VoIP mode or the pro gaming mode would be fine for my headphones. But if you have 64 ohm headphones, you need the exciter mode, which turns the amp up in the sound card to full uh, power. Now, the difference between VoIP and pro gaming mode to me is just that you're getting slightly more signal at 32 ohms and just enough to power something under 64 ohms. So while cranking up the volume might damage to a certain extent 32 ohm headphones, at the same time, if you're careful of the volume, you're gonna get a fuller, louder sound without having to increase your input at all, or your input gain or output gain at all. So I leave it at 32 to 64 because it's somewhat, my headphones, they're higher quality than a VoIP headset and I figured it, it's going to result in just sort of a more more full signal. Now, lastly, the virtualization settings. You have two ways of disabling them, and the way I prefer doing it is hitting the headphone or hi-fi or whatever it is button right here. Don't ever use this because it's some kind of funky funky software simulation thing. But if you're using the hi-fi um, option or have it turned on, what's going to happen is it 
cancels all of the processing in terms of surround sound, environmental processing, and um, to a certain extent, some of the equalization and reverb things that it does to produce sound, surround sound, it just turns them off. So the other way you can do that is uncheck this stuff, the you know, Dolby headphone and stuff like that. But really, if you have this checked, it just automatically negates all that stuff. And I think if you uncheck it, it'll, let me see. If you uh, check it and then uncheck, yeah, it'll restore your settings to what you had before you checked it. But I leave it checked because it just makes sense. Now the mixer, and this is the other really big important thing, and there's some stuff with the volume knob, like basically you should have the output of this thing turned up to 100% all the time, and then adjust your system audio, and then smart volume is the devil, and you can be useful, I guess. But in the mixer, and this is something that's really critical, I'm gonna play back a sound file, and I'll explain what's going on um, after it plays. So this is uh, from my previous video, and I know just to preface this, I know that the audio in this video that I'm about to play back is playing back at minus 3D, 3 dB at its peaks. So, with that said, let's carry on. Hello, this is Boss Jedi Zohan, and today Boogie put out a video talking about his life, YouTube, uh, a bunch of stuff. Okay, so you can see that the peaks are appearing on the sound graph, or whatever it's called, I don't even know. Um, they're appearing at around zero or just under and that's probably somewhere around minus 3 dB like it should now I'm gonna mute the um, mute the recording of the audio so that you guys can hear it but um or you guys can't hear it but you can still see what's going on I'm gonna take my headphones off because it'll make me go deaf because I just turn all the audio to my headphones off basically but um so basically if I continue playing it we'll we'll talk about the graph some more so you can see how ev the, at, at its loudest, the audio is hitting about this point and sometimes peaking at zero. So what that tells me is that the audio that this is outputting to my headphones is a little bit hot. And so when you get it, and I'll show you what this is set to now, it's set to about 50 right now. So when you get it, it's set to a default of like 70 something. And the problem with that is that, is that this scale goes from zero to minus 20 dB and zero to plus 20 dB. And the thing is you want all of your audio to max at max hit zero dB. And the reason for this is that anything more than that is potentially going to distort. And ideally all of your audio comes in at minus three dB. Now what this means is if you turn these down a bit, to what I had it, which was uh, about 45 or 50-ish. or 50 -ish. If you turn these down a bit, you'll see that the peaks start coming in under zero dB. And what that means is in my headphones or in whatever the output device that you're listening to the sound with through the sound card, you're not gonna get any sort of distortion or peaking from the sound card. Now, the other thing is that this setting, this mixer setting, doesn't directly affect the system audio. So if you're recording the audio with your computer, this setting has no bearing on the level that the system is recording. So the good thing about this is that you can very finely adjust the amount of signal that your headphones or audio device are getting, while at the same time not affecting your system at all. So if you want to have stuff play back at full volume, but you don't want to listen to it at full volume, or you want to control the level so that it comes in at a proper level, you can do that without affecting how it sounds natively to your computer. Because essentially what this is doing is it's cranking up the output gain. Like this is an output gain slider. And so I have found that by my estimation, 50% on these sliders is about neutral, where it's not putting any output gain on the signal beyond what the system should be. You know, it's kind of like the reference audio level. So lastly, you can just turn off everything. This is your EQ, and personally, I prefer to do EQing on the, on the application level rather than the driver level, which is what this software is, but you're more than welcome to. It's a decent EQ. It's not very fine-grained. As you can see, the scales are very small, but it works and it has some nice presets. Karaoke, all this stuff, this is all crap. I don't even know why it's on here, but anyway, that's how you set up this sound card in particular anyway to give you the best possible audio output. Um, if you like this video, please leave a like or comment saying what you appreciate about it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.